weedy boy. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs and creatives alike. Lacing. It is a closure method that is, to be precise, as old as dirt. As such, there's been a whole lot of innovation in the area throughout the centuries and a whole little of caring about it. Lacing something up takes time, and you know how we feel about time. Faster, faster, faster! Buttons are faster, hooks are faster, zippers are faster, Velcro is faster, snaps are faster! Honestly, no shade to people who want to get dressed very quickly in the morning, because I am one of them. But nowadays, there appears to be a subset of human beings who are interested in lace-up clothing for aesthetic reasons, as well as a subset of human beings who seem to be interested in lace-up clothes for adjustability reasons. And it is my personal opinion that there is likely some overlap between those two groups. I'm in that overlap. Right there. That's me. Unfortunately, this is yet another area that's not great for Googling, mainly because of, like, terminology gaps. Lacing seems to most generally refer to the actual method of lacing something up, like with the cord itself. So when I looked up types of lacing, I was getting all of these different ways to actually lace something up. And here's the thing, I'm still interested in that. But this video is going to be long enough on its own, knowing me, so that will have to be a whole separate exploration. But I was looking specifically for information on the holes, the thing the cord goes through. And yeah, it was a little bit difficult to look up because I'm not really sure that I want to type the word holes into Google at any point for any reason. I did manage to compile a rather long list of various ways that you can make holes to string a cord through and thereby tie a piece of fabric around your body. And today I'm gonna test all of them. Today, tomorrow, the next day. We'll see. If there are any that you can think of that I missed, please do tell me in the comments, even though it's going to drive me absolutely insane that I can't go back and add them to the video. Such is life. Here's what we're going to try. Let me grab my list because I don't feel like memorizing it. Punched grommets, D-ring grommets, hooked grommets, hand-sewn eyelets, button holes, webbing eyelets, eyelet tape, hook and eye tape, trim with holes, corset lacing, satin D-ring tape, and hidden ribbon lacing. There's a lot of subcategories within those categories. So all in all, I have 21 lacing methods to explore. Buckle in, y'all! Or lace in, but it'll take longer. <laughs> Quick note from future Charlie, just so you know what's going on here. Um, this exploration ended up being way more thorough than I expected. So yeah, I'll tell you more at the end. But this video is only going to cover grommets and eyelets. And I will be back with next week's video to cover all the rest. Yeah? Okay. Back to past Charlie. My plan is to make a bunch of cuffs, each out of the same material and each big enough to fit like three or four holes or lacing points of whatever kind. I want these cuffs to be big enough to wrap around my ankle for testing. Yes, that's a bit odd, but here's the thing. I was originally going to do like wrist cuffs and then I realized that trying to lace up a ton of cuffs on my own wrist would be a giant pain in the butt. So ankle it is, and this will also allow me to like strength test them kind of, like using my own body weight and my own leg strength. Yeah, fun times. So I have a little template here. Some may call it a pattern. And yeah, I need 21 of these. So the cricket, why? Uh, you can always hear him so loud on there because of the high pitchedness. Sir, do you mind? Oh, it didn't work this time. He's learned my tricks. I can't get him to be quiet. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna test one of these before I cut out all 21. I have this tablecloth, which is very pretty, but also I got it at Goodwill for like a dollar and it has some stains on it. Okay, let's do it. Okay, that should work. Now let's make 20 more. <laughs> Yay. Okay, we're prepped for cuffing. Let's make some holes. You know what? Let's take a quick break to hear a word from today's sponsor. You know what's super duper cool? Having your own website. And you know what's even cooler? 
designing it all yourself with Squarespace's super easy to use platform. You may not have the budget for a professional website designer, but if you're wanting an online portfolio to show to clients or a personalized store for your small business, that goal is achievable with Squarespace. Their templates start you out with a bunch of options. So whether you're chic, cutesy, or down to earth, there's going to be something that's perfect for you. From there, you can enter your own lovely photos, your own personal story, your own color palette and pages. And if you ever get stuck or confused, they have great videos on their help page to keep you going every step of the way. I love how easily you can jump back and forth between a monitor view and a phone view to make sure that your edits are gonna look great on any device. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash the stitchery for 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and let's start lacing and we're back we're starting with grommets grommets eyelets What's the difference, right? Such drama, such controversy. Okay, so here's the thing. I looked this up and grommets and eyelets are not just used in the fashion industry. So most of the places I found that gave some sort of like, here's the difference between the two, brought it down to either the size or what they're made out of. So look, I'm just gonna call them grommets, even though both of my packages say eyelet. I don't know, it's fine though, okay? Don't yell at me in the comments. I'm calling them grommets for now. So grommets, people are apparently terrified of them. Like a very common comment on ye good old first split side skirt video thing, was I would so much rather put in a zipper than deal with grommets. Or it's so much faster to put in a zipper than to put in all those grommets. I don't really feel like there's even much of a comparison to be made there. It just feels like two completely different things because putting in a zipper is a sewing skill, but putting in grommets, even though a sewist is doing it, almost feels more like a woodworking skill because hammer. If you go to the fabric store and buy grommets, you're likely getting something that looks like this. It's not very many and it's kind of expensive and, um, you can find them way cheaper online. But very likely, especially if it says kit on the package, there will be a metal disc and a metal column pole thing inside. And with these and a hammer and technically like some scissors and a pen and stuff like that, you're able to put in grommets all on your own. I find it pretty fun, not gonna lie, because taking a break from your sewing machine to whack something with a hammer is like, therapeutic. So we are going to start with your basic hammer them in grommets. These get applied to a finished piece. So I'm using the one that I've completely sewn together here. And I've also sewn a line about a half an inch, maybe from the top stitching on each side, uh, mostly for stability, but also to create like a clear channel kind of area in which to apply me grommets. The grommet itself is two pieces. The front half that you'll see on the actual front of the garment is the tall one. And then the back half is just flat. This package also came with washers, but not all of them do. And I probably won't use them. These are fourth inch grommets. And that size is the inside circle, not the outside one, because these are also fourth inch grommets. And that outer ring is much bigger. I want four grommets on each side of this cuff. So I'm gonna start by doing some math and marking a dot where each one should fall. Or you can skip that entirely and just lay out the top circles by eye. We don't have to be scientific if we don't wanna be. Then I'll hold each one exactly where I want it and trace the inside circle. Also noteworthy, I'm using a heat erasable pin and I'm marking on the back of my cuff rather than the front. Now you need holes for the grommets to go in. You can use some very pointy ended snips to stab a hole through or an awl, but I don't have one. Or you can fold the fabric and very carefully snip a little line in the middle of the circle with the tip of your fabric scissors. I think this is the part of grommet installation that scares people. And honestly, I get it. You've got a lovely finished piece here and now you're cutting holes in it. There is no going back if you get it wrong. I mean, there probably is. Everything is fixable, but that's what tends to play through the brain. In the end, you don't want just a little hole though. You want a circle cut out that is big enough for your grommet to fit through. It can be tempting to cut a way too small circle and then just like force the grommet through it. But remember that that will distort your fabric around each grommet and actually not look as good in the end. I've got all my holes. So I've moved to a hard surface outside cause I don't want to ruin my hardwood floors. And I'm laying down the anvil first, ridged side up. Then the front half of the grommet goes on top upside down and then the fabric 
right side down. That's the part to take note of, cause yeah, I've put the grommet on the back side of my fabric more than once, which is why I now put the grommet in the fabric as it's supposed to be. And then I put them on the anvil as a pair. Next comes the back side of the grommet. And finally you stick the setter in there and smash it with a hammer. How hard you have to hit it kind of depends on the size and the material of your grommet. So these hardly needed any energy from me. It's probably a good idea to do a test run before diving straight in with your beautifully constructed corset bodice. But that is it, y'all. I mean, did that seem super difficult? Cause yeah, like before I had ever done it before and before I had actually like looked up how to do it, I also kind of had this idea that like grommets are super hard to put in. And then once I actually did it for the first time, I was like, oh wait, <laughs> no, they're not. You think we're done with grommets now? Ha! Never! Okay, eventually, yes, we will finish with grommets, but I didn't just want to test how to put in grommets with a hammer. I wanted to test other methods of grommet installation too. Yeah, I went on a little shopping spree and yet I still don't have a serger. I have only ever used the good old hammer and anvil method. So I'm really excited to try all of these. First up, we have one that was suggested to me in several comments, the good old crocodile. It's pink, yay. Uh, this guy was not exactly like cheapity cheap. Not bad if you're like putting in grommets a lot, but I wanted to compare it with legit cheap stuff. So I also got this one, which was $10 on Amazon. And that included a whole bunch of grommets that it came with. It looks cheap. Sounds cheap, but hey, maybe it'll work just as well. And then finally, yes, I bought a full on grommet press. Um, this one was like a hundred dollars, but there were versions that were not that much more expensive than the crocodile. They were in that same range. I think this one was just more expensive because it came with this base here. Otherwise you get this top part and you have to have like a wooden table or a workbench or something to screw it into, which I do not have. So I figured it was worth the extra money to get a base for it so I can actually use it. And it also came with like 900 grommets. So I'm set for life. <laughs> so I have made three more cuff bases. I'm going to start with the crocodile and let's see how easy these things are because uh, if they're super duper fast, I might just exclusively switch to making lace up clothing. Let's check the very folded up manual. Hole punching. That's kind of the cool thing is this one can punch holes for you. That is kind of the, the more involved part of putting in a grommet. Could be worth the cost just to get rid of that. Oh, I see. When you close it, not only does this come together, but also on this side and on this side, a little sharpened pole comes out to punch a hole. We're going for it. Yeah, that worked pretty decently, slightly attached, but not much. Okay, let me get you a close up of that. <laughs> Using the side that is marked 3 16th because that is the size of my eyelets, grommets, whatever. And then I do a little punchy punchy. Bam. So now I can put my eyelet in the front, put the backing on the back. And then there's a side that's marked base which I'm gonna put up because I'm doing mine upside down and bam. I like that it clicks cause then you know for sure that like it's done, you're all good. Y'all, I mean, the hole punching is the revolutionary part here in my mind at least, but also like it ain't too bad to just be able to go Click instead of, you know, getting a hammer and everything. I love it. Let's do it more. Even if you're just doing them every now and then, this is definitely, I think, a tool worth investing in. But now the question is, can you just invest in a much, much cheaper one? because we like cheap things. So like I said, this one came with a bunch of grommets. What it did not come with is instructions. What I'm not sure about is 
this. Oh. I think this is for cutting holes. But I think you have to hammer it. But why is it shaped like this? I'm so confused and I'm not gonna look it up. So this one came with one fourth inch grommets. We've only got one size that we can use with this. And I think that's the downside. Even with this, you still can only use two sizes or you have to get more of the same tool, but sized up. So I'm gonna use the anvil from round one and this, I'm guessing, hole cutting device. <laughs> and we're gonna see if we can cut a hole through this fabric. Should I be doing this on my desk? Probably not. Oh, it was so loud. That was unpleasant. Also, it did not cut through. I don't wanna carry you all the way outside. I'm just gonna go test this outside. I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, so that didn't really work, but it kind of worked. Like it cut a partial circle out and I can easily snip out the rest. Final verdict on whatever these things are. Don't love them. Let's test this, because this is what I really care about. Let's see. Def well, that was bad. Um, there's my first attempt. I don't know how well you can tell, but like, it did not do the whole thing. Is that answering my question? Don't buy the extremely cheap one. Sometimes cheap is not better, y'all. Theoretically, according to what I know, this half with the little nub should go on the top of the grommet, so the underside. Yeah, no. Oh, it didn't even get on there, it just fell off. Okay, so just for the funsies of it, I'm gonna try it the other way around and see if that was operator error. Can you see how that like split? But it did get it all the way around. So I think that was operator error. I think the nub inside is for some reason supposed to go on the back, but it still looks terrible. I'm not gonna finish making this one. I'm not gonna sit here and do more grommets with a tool that doesn't work. Let's move on to the exciting guy. Hi, sweet potato. So this guy came with three different... You having a good scratch back there? He came with three different die sets. Um, basically grommet sizes, you know? And it also came with all of these grommets. So I'm going with the smallest one that they sent. I think it's still a fourth of an inch. Um, so here's the thing. I looked at the instructions and they don't say to cut a hole in your fabric. They even show a picture of just a, a full piece of fabric with no hole in it going in. So I believe I am to understand that this machine simultaneously cuts a hole and puts in the grommet, which is very exciting to me. I should mark a where it's going, yeah? Now I will say this one is a little harder to line up because you don't have a pre-cut hole or anything. That feels right. And then, I heard a slicing sound. Oh y'all. Oh yes. Did all that in one press, but you observe it's off-centered because I couldn't tell where to line it up. Still gotta say, love it. <laughs> it's so satisfying. I mean, I guess I could just do this slowly. That worked. Yay, let's do more. So final thoughts on basic punched grommets. Even if this is your method, if this, <laughs> is your method, it's not that hard. They are definitely not worth being intimidated of or fearful of. If you're planning to do grommets all the frickin' time, yeah, it might be worth investing in one of these. It wasn't that expensive as sewing room tools go, and it's very satisfying to use once you learn how to line things up. But let's move on, shall we? Let me clean all of this up first. Okay, it's late, I should really be quitting right now, but I very much wanted to finish up the world of grommets before, you know, eating dinner and going to bed. Punched grommets, we're done with. All of the regular whole ones, yeah, done. But there are other kinds of grommets or eyelets. So I have D-ring eyelets, and hook eyelets. Now, the interesting thing with both of these is I know from the pictures of them when I bought them that they don't have a hole in the top 
eyelet. It's all, it's more of a rivet because it's smooth on the top. I know I can't use the big boy machine because it's too small already. These are like an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna see if I can use these. I did discover when just looking at these a minute ago that first of all, I was using this incorrectly, total operator error, because the nub that's on this one, I was thinking was the same as the little pole sticking out of this one, but it's actually the same as the nub on the base side of the crocodile and this little pole sticking out retracts. So I think if I'm doing something without a hole, I can still use that side and the little pole thing there will just retract and it'll still work. Or theoretically, I could use this one because there is no pole on this one. There's just an open hole. That's my thought. I think it'll work. We're gonna try it. First up, the D-ring eyelets. So you have the D-rings themselves, which are on these little tabs. And there are definitely leather versions of this. I couldn't find any that already had a hole in the leather. And now that I think about it, it didn't have to already have a hole in the leather because I could have just punched that hole myself. But all that to say, you can get them completely metal like this, or you can get them where the tab that is connecting is leather, which might be more comfortable on some clothing types. And then we have what is basically the same as our last grommets. You have two pieces, but the top is just smooth and, and whole and there's no hole in it. Yeah. Let's give it a go, eh? Huh. So these actually like click together before you've actually pressed them together. So you can at least like click them into place. Or if you were using like ridiculously thick fabric, you wouldn't even need to press them. You could just click them on there. Okay, it dented the top, but it worked. Let me try old cheapy boy. Oh, well that like completely broke through the top. <gasps> Wait a minute. Y'all, these come out. What? Have they given me everything I needed and I just didn't realize it? Was this in the instruction manual and I just didn't read it? <laughs> yeah, it was. Okay, I'm liking this tool a whole lot more now. It really helps to read all the instructions, doesn't it? Well, let's try this again, shall we? Now that I've destroyed two of them. We're learning, y'all. We are learning. Bam! Oh my god, y'all. Sometimes it just takes a couple tries to finally go back and read the instruction manual. All right, now you can have a close up now that I know what I'm doing. So the little back piece goes in first, then we put the D ring on, then we click that in place. We now have a round flat thing right here to not punch a hole in our rivet. And we squish. Boom. So this is my crocodile crushed it. That is my split straight through the top. And there's what it should look like. What? Okay, final one, last thing is hook eyelets. You really only see these on like work boots, I feel like, but it's a cool concept. I like the thought of it. I feel like it would be very steampunky looking. Now I at least know how to attach them because the little rivets they came with are exactly the same as the other ones. So again, we are just going to punch the eighth inch holes. The only difference here is that the hook is added height and it's really close to the main rivet, so I don't know if it's gonna get in the way of any of this. I think it's okay. Yeah, it is a bit of a problem once you get into these because you can't squish it like this. I don't know if you can see that, but the hook is now between the two platforms. So if I squished this, it would also squish the hook closed. Let's see if I can come at it another way. Yeah, you kind of have to come at it directly from the side in order for the hook to not get in the way of anything. So these are definitely a little bit trickier with this specific tool. Made it work though, a little bit uneven, but that is still um, just my fault for cutting the holes in the wrong place.
Well, that's been pretty cool so far. Tomorrow I will come back to you with lots more lacing options that do not require any form of special tool like this one. And I think it goes without saying that this is not sponsored, but like, yeah. I do highly recommend if you are looking for an easier way to put in grommets. Although I do still want to remind everyone that the very basic hammer thing isn't too bad either. See you tomorrow. Yeah, so it's a few days later and um, you may have noticed that we only got through six of the 21, eventually 22, lacing options and this is already a full length episode. <laughs> I did not realize how much detail I was going into on the grommets while I was going into it, so that's it for this week, folks. I'm splitting the video in two. Come back next week to see all of those other lovely non-grommet ways to lace something up. And for now, here is a quick overview of the six cuffs that we actually got through this week. here. See you next week. Later taters. Do you like my song? I think <coughs> I'm dying. I'm confused. Are we having fun yet?